Okay, so now that we know a little bit about the three different types of fats, what we're going to do is an exercise. We're going to try and classify each type of fat as good fats, bad fats, and very bad fats. Now, what's your guess here? How would you classify the three different types of fats as good, bad, or very bad? Well, here is the correct answer. Unsaturated fats are good fats, saturated fats are bad fats, and trans fats are very bad fats. Now, of course, we need to prove this, and in order to do so, we need to discuss cholesterol. Cholesterol is a waxy substance that is produced by our own body to produce many hormones like estrogen and testosterone. Now, if you did not understand that, don't worry about it too much. For the purpose of this video, however, what you need to understand is that cholesterol is produced by our own body and that it is the starting point of the production of several other essential compounds that our body needs. Cholesterol comes in two different varieties, good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Having too much of the bad cholesterol in the bloodstreams can form deposits on the walls of coronary arteries. What are coronary arteries? These are blood vessels that carry blood to the heart. So when there is too much of the bad cholesterol or too much of deposit, then that leads to a heart attack. Not a very good situation. Good cholesterol on the other end of the spectrum is like a garbage truck. It ferries the bad cholesterol from the coronary arteries back to the liver. So it goes without saying that we need more of the good cholesterol and less of the bad cholesterol, right? Well, that is exactly what unsaturated fats do. Unsaturated fats, one more time, are present in plant products like nuts and avocados and also in fish like salmon. So what unsaturated fats do is that they increase the good cholesterol and decrease the bad cholesterol. This is good on both counts. In terms of consumption of foods that contain unsaturated fats, the recommendation is that you should choose unsaturated fats over saturated fats wherever possible. Moving on to saturated fats, these are classified as bad fats. Uh, now, a very quick reminder, saturated fats are found in milk products and this includes butter, cheese and ice cream. They are also found in meat products and oils that are solid at room temperature like coconut oil and palm oil. So what saturated fat does is that it increases the good cholesterol which is good but it also increases the bad cholesterol which is really bad. Uh, we learned previously that increase in bad cholesterol can lead to a heart attack. So now I'm going to show you a quick simulation of how a heart attack occurs if there is too much plaque buildup or bad cholesterol buildup in the coronary arteries. Here we go. The network of blood vessels that branch over the surface of the heart are called the coronary arteries. Atherosclerosis can happen in any part of the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries supply the heart with blood. Over years, fatty deposits in the blood can build up and form a plaque or atheroma on the artery wall. This can prevent the heart muscle from getting the blood and the oxygen supply that it needs. If this happens, you'll feel a tight chest pain called angina, especially during exertion or stress. If the plaque bursts, it causes a blood clot that blocks the artery. This cuts off the blood supply to an area of the heart. This is called a heart attack. So we just saw a simulation of how excessive bad cholesterol in the coronary arteries can cause plaque buildup and that can eventually lead to a heart attack. Now, the recommendation in terms of consumption of saturated fats, which by the way increase bad cholesterol, needs to be very measured. I'm not going to ask you to completely eliminate saturated fats from your diet, as I know that they are present in many of the tasty foods that we eat. What I will say, however, is that you replace saturated fats with unsaturated fats wherever it is possible. And you consume saturated fats only on special occasions. If you're looking for a more specific target, I will say that 7% of total daily calories or lower from saturated fats is a good target. That means that if your daily calorie intake is about 2000 calories, 
then you should get no more than 140 calories per day from saturated fats. So let's move on to trans fats now. These are classified as the very bad fats. As a quick reminder, trans fats are found in many of the snack foods that we buy from the grocery store and they're also in french fries and other fast food that is cooked by restaurants that use hydrogenated oils. Now the hydrogenated oils is the key part here because that's what adds trans fats to french fries. Um, trans fats are classified as very bad fats because they decrease the good cholesterol and increase the bad cholesterol. Now that is bad on both counts. The recommendation in terms of consuming foods that have trans fats is that just don't consume them at all. Your body does not need them. So if you find out that a food product has trans fats in it, just say no. Don't consume it. Here's another reason why we should not consume foods that have trans fats. Foods like french fries from fast food restaurants. By the way, french fries from fast food restaurants have trans fats because they're cooked in hydrogenated oils because fast food restaurants use hydrogenated oils if you were to make french fries at home using olive oil you would not have the deleterious effects of having trans fats in your french fries so back to uh, the fact that i was presenting about trans fats which is that for every extra two percent of calories from trans fat daily and that is about the amount in a medium order of fast food french fries, the risk of coronary heart disease goes up by 23%. I'm sorry to present such uh, gory statistics and pictures in front of you, but the health risks that are caused by trans fats are serious. It is estimated that eliminating trans fats from the US food supply would prevent somewhere between 6 to 19% of heart attacks and related deaths. That is more than 200,000 deaths each year. So a simple rule about trans fats, our body does not need them, so let's not consume them. Okay, so let's do a recap of what we have learned thus far. We started this lesson out by asking the question, do we really need fats? And it turned out the answer was a resounding yes. Yes, we need fats because of the many positive benefits or uses of fats, some of which are that fats are a great source of energy and they're also a great depot or warehouse for storing energy. Fats also protect our internal organs and insulate our body and fats make our foods tasty. We then realized that we needed only a certain type and a certain amount of fat in our daily diet uh, and therefore it was important for us to learn about the different types of fats. Uh, there are three types of fats we discovered unsaturated fats, saturated fats and trans fats and then we classified them into three different groups. We said that unsaturated fats are the good fats, saturated fats are bad fats and trans fats are very bad fats. Unsaturated fats are in uh, plant products like nuts and avocados. They're also in plant-based oils like olive oil and mustard oil. All of these are liquid at room temperature and they're also in certain types of fish like salmon. Saturated fats can be found in milk and meat products and in many of uh, the oils that are solid at room temperature like coconut oil and palm oil. The recommendation with saturated and unsaturated fats was to replace saturated fats with unsaturated fats wherever possible because unsaturated fats are really good for us. And then we figured that trans fats are in many of the snack foods that we get from the grocery store and they're also in many of the products made by fast food restaurants that cook in hydrogenated oils. We also discovered that trans fats are really bad for us and therefore we should not be eating them. In the next video we're going to talk about carbohydrates. See you then.